good morning, everybody. Thanks for inviting me uh, to this nice uh, uh, meeting. Uh, and I would like to add some of my experience uh, about radio surgery for especially uh, spinal meds because it's the most commonly seen malignant uh, spine tumor. Uh, as as, uh, as uh, previous uh, speaker told, uh, spinal meds causes inst instability, neurological deficits and pain, and we should we should deal with these problems. And uh, most of the, uh, let's say 40% of the uh, spine mats have some kind of uh, spinal cord compression. And uh, treatment decision is, uh, should be uh, multidisciplinary. And there, sh there are many parameters uh, that, that uh, we should encounter. Uh, clinical manifestations, St instability, epidural spinal cord compression, a number of spine mats, and uh, especially this is very important, uh, the degree of mobility that the patient desires or can reasonably expect to attain after our uh, management. This is very important. Also the uh, histology is important, whether it is uh, radio resistant or radio sensitive. And all, uh, the other thing is the survival expectations. Uh, some of the uh, uh, skills are very important while we are dis, uh, dis deciding on the type of management. One is uh, epidural uh, spinal cord compression uh, degree. Uh, Bilski reported this scale, and we are using this scale. Uh, it's from zero to three. Uh, if there is uh, no uh, compression at all, it's uh, called zero uh, degree. But if there is a very a high degree of compression, it's called three. And also this, this type of scoring is very important before uh, deciding on the type of management, again, whether uh, surgery or radiation or radiosurgery. Uh, we call it uh, SIN scoring, spinal instability neoplastic score. Uh, it is made of uh, location, pain, bone lesion, alignment, vertebral body collapse, posterior lateral uh, elements uh, involvement. Uh, according to these uh, parameters, we, uh, we uh, calculate the uh, score, and if the score is zero to four, it is stable, so we can do non-surgical management, as uh, Professor Zili mentioned. And if, if it is seven to 12, then it is indeterminate. We are not sure it is stable or not. Then uh, there can be some uh, minimal invasive surgeries to keep these patients to the stable site. For example, vertebroplast or kyphoplasty. And there are some patients unstable. Uh, their, their scores are 13 to 18. Uh, we should do surgery for these patients. Uh, as I said before, there are uh, different types of modalities to treat these patients. Uh, surgery is one, and there are uh, end block excision, debulking, palliative decompression, and stabilization, and also vertebroplasty and kyphoplasty. Uh, I will focus on radio surgery. This uh, uh, paper from 2013. Uh, this is norms decision framework. Most of all, uh, most of, of you. You, you know this uh, framework. We can decide on the uh, management according this, to this table. But uh, this, this is another table published in 2017 uh, in Serotactic uh, Neurosurgery International. Uh, I would like to summarize the indications for radiosurgery for spinal mass. Uh, the patient should be in good condition, good to, good to uh, excellent performance status. Uh, the patient should have uh, oligometastatic disease. It means less than five mats in the body. Uh, and uh, the other uh, indication is there should be an oligoprogression in an oligometastatic patient. And no more than three levels involved in the spine. Uh, no or minimal spinal instability, as I, as I said before. The SIN score should be zero to six. and the Bilski score should be uh, zero to one. Sometimes even we can uh, add some patients with Bilski score two. 
uh, with uh, mild uh, motor weakness. And uh, the better uh, indication is radio-resistant histology. But of course, if we can treat radio-resistant histology, why not with radio-sensitive, with radio surgery, which is more safe and more effective? So uh, another uh, indication is no prior uh, conventional radiotherapy. But if there is one uh, conventional t uh, therapy prior to this uh, presentation, there should be a five months interval between the treatments, uh, conventional radiotherapy, five months, and then we can do radio surgery. And uh, uh, the, the most important thing is there should be a, a proper platform to do uh, radio surgery. Not all the radiotherapy platforms cannot uh, perform radio surgery. These are the uh, examples of uh, spine meds, how, what we can treat one to uh, different three levels or two contiguous levels and one separate level. So why radio surgery? Why not? We, are, uh, we were happy with treating with conventional radiotherapy because uh, there are uh, unsatisfactory rates of uh, complete pain and uh, tumor control with conventional radiotherapy because we can only give very s small doses of ra radiation with this uh, conventional radiotherapy. It's about, uh, for example, if it is single fraction, 8 gray, it is 14 uh, gray biological effective dose. But if you increase the fraction's uh, size uh, 4, it means 4 times 5 gray or 3 times 10 gray, you can increase it only uh, 28 to uh, 39 grays. But with radio surgery, you can increase this bio biological effective dose to uh, 40s to 80s. In a single fraction, you can give 16 to 24 gray. Uh, in two to three fractions, you can give 24 to 30 gray. And in five fractions, you can even increase the dose to uh, 40, uh, 40 gray. And we know a lot of things, uh, a lot of good results from brain meds. Uh, treating with radio surgery instead of whole brain radiotherapy. So why not uh, we can uh, why not, why not uh, we use radio surgery in spinal meds? So uh, the paradigm shift is uh, the palliative. We, we switch palliative doses to the curative doses in radio surgery. This is a very nice dose uh, plan. You can see uh, how we can spare uh, spinal cord. Uh, how, how the uh, steep dose follow-off we can create in the spinal canal. This is a, a typical uh, image for spine radio surgery. This is a cyber knife machine and different beams coming from different angles. So they converge and focus on the tumor uh, while preserving the normal structures. Uh, and also, uh, people who are dealing with uh, spinal, spinal radio surgery, they come together and then uh, they uh, proposed a target volume definition uh, guideline. This is how we uh, counter the uh, uh, target according to the types of the spinal meds. And uh, there can be a question whether it is safe or not. Uh, this, I, I would like to share some of the uh, papers about the safety of the radio surgery. Uh, this is uh, Gersten's paper. He didn't observe any myelopathy after 500 uh, patients. Uh, Samuel Rio's paper, they only uh, came across only one uh, radiation-related myelopathy. And uh, the last one is more than 1,000 patients uh, published from Stanford. Gibbs published it and uh, they only uh, observed six cases, and uh, out of six cases, three of them had uh, prior conventional radiotherapy. So uh, there, the constraints are uh, there. We know the constraints. Uh, if you give 10 gray to the maximum point of, uh, sorry, if you, if you give 10 gray to the 10% of the spinal cord, what you draw to, during the treatment is safe. Another uh, constraint is 14 gray for the uh, maximum point dose of spinal cord is safe. And also uh, Arjun Segal from Toronto uh, published another paper. They collected all the spinal uh, myelopathy cases and they uh, calculated the probability of the uh, spinal uh, cord myelopathy 
after uh, radio surgery. And we, we just, uh, while we are planning our uh, radio surgery, we look at this, and then uh, we can see the uh, maximum point dose of spinal cord, and then we can talk with our patients that I will treat you with these doses, and then uh, your uh, myelopathy probability is that. Uh, I would like to share uh, Peter Gersten's uh, 500 cases from Pittsburgh. Uh, he treated all these patients with uh, cybernife radio surgery. And the outcomes are uh, pain improvement is 86% uh, without, reg regardless of the histology. Of course, uh, with radiosensitive uh, uh, primaries, the, the results are better. And the uh, long-term radiographic control is 88%. Again, uh, for example, in breast and lung cancers, uh, the local tumor control is 100%. And there is 84% clinical improvement in this uh, group, and no neurological deficit or spinal cord injury, as I said before. Uh, if you look at the other centers, uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center has a 90% uh, local tumor control. MD Anderson has 84%. Pittsburgh is median 88% and pain relief is 84% to 100% uh, in these centers. Uh, you can ask uh, how should we treat this patient in one single session or multiple sessions, does it matter? Of course, there, there are some uh, advantages and disadvantages about the fraction size of the radio surgery. Single session, if you treat uh, your patient in a single session, then there's a very early pain control but uh, if you treat with multi multiple uh, fractions, with multiple fractions, three to five days, uh, there is greater tumor control and less need for, the, for a retreatment in the long-term survivors. And uh, one of the uh, issue is after radio surgery is vertebral compression fracture. Uh, uh, we can uh, observe some vertebral compression fractures after this treatment. There are some prognostic factors uh, uh, who uh, who will have this problem. These are, uh, if you give more than 20 grays, you may have one. If the uh, uh, lesion was lytic uh, prior to treatment, you can uh, vertebral compression fracture. Uh, spinal alignment is another problem. Also, baseline uh, VCF is another problem for uh, further uh, VCF. Uh, of course, radio surgery can be combined with other modalities open surgery and instrumented fusion, and then radio surgery. Separation surgery is another term. Uh, separation surgery is something uh, you, you try to uh, remove more tumor close to the spinal cord so that we can give better doses to the tumor while we are preserving spinal cord. So while you are doing surgery, it's better to remove more and more uh, uh, neighboring the uh, spinal cord. And uh, vertebral augmentation and radio surgery is another uh, option. In our center, we uh, treated 3,500 3, uh, patients, all indications, and uh, 340 patients with spinal meds. Uh, and I, I will only give one case uh, example, uh, which is just uh, coincided with your uh, question. Uh, it is, uh, the patient is 28-year-old male patient, history of Ewing sarcoma of femoral head. Uh, he presented with neck pain, and uh, imaging uh, modalities showed C3 mass. Uh, and we did a biopsy there, and we reconfirmed that it is a Ewing sarcoma. And we treated this patient with, uh, in three fractions, giving eight gray, and the spinal cord got only uh, almost 12 gray. And it was great, six months later, he had another met uh, at L1 level. We used the same regimen, uh, used the same dose. And at 12 months follow-up, uh, we, we got a PET CT, there was no uh, FTG uptake, and there was no VCF, vertebral compression fracture. He was great. Uh, and this is uh, C3 uh, MR, T2, uh, sagittal and axial plane. But at 19 months, he had another, I mean, the third mat around C1, C2 level, extra dural mat uh, compressing the spinal cord. So we decided to treat this 
met again, and we gave the same regimen three, uh, in three fractions, eighth grade, and uh, this is.